Well, I've just got a pumpkin for carving and there's a brisk breeze in the air. That's right, fall is here. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's 85 degrees in this studio and I'm actively dying. <laughs> Here's some fall games to play. And that's enough of the warm clothes. I live in California, we only got two types of weather here. We have great weather and fire, okay? That's it, great weather and then fire. And we are in the season of fall, which is mostly fire season here, but it's time to play some cozy games. We got a lot of cool stuff in the fall. You've got Halloween, you've got the changes of the seasons, the changes of the, the colors of the trees, so many things going on. But we still got games to play and there's so many games that make me feel like fall. And I'm gonna give you five game recommendations right now that I think you should play this fall season. Our first game today is going to be a Three Sisters. This is a beefy roll and write in a series of roll and writes that includes uh, Fleet the Dice Game and then uh, Motor City is the newest one. This is the, the middle child, Three Sisters. This is a game all about kind of working on the symbiosis of three crops. The Three Sisters is a real thing. It's yeah, using squash, pumpkins, it's pumpkin season. Did you see it in the intro? It's right there, my pumpkin, for guidance. <laughs> you have pumpkins, corn, and beans that all kind of grow together. The pumpkins, the squash and stuff, uh, uh, kind of protect the ground. The, the corn stalks grow high and the beans can work their way like a little lattice around the stalk, using the stalk for support. So these are three plants that all work in harmony together. And in this one, you were working, uh, like all the games in this series, uh, rolling out and uh, drawing and kind of working through boxes and stuff to trigger scorings and combinations. In this game, you can grow, again, those three sisters as I talked about, and certain ones need different things, like the pumpkins kind of work around uh, the edge of your uh, garden, I suppose, and the corn socks can grow a certain height, and then once you get to a certain height of growth on there, then you can start working on the beans because they have to have that structural integrity. I really like all the inner workings of the three plants and all the things that you can trigger for bonuses. And there's also a whole other side of the board which has your kind of like tool shed garage with a bunch of different uh, ways to kind of mess with the game rules. And there's also uh, fruit trees you can do. Uh, fruit trees, the harvest and stuff, apple picking is a, a very quintessentially fall thing that uh, I associate with childhood. And Three Sisters really gets into the feel and look of kind of fall and specifically that time of harvest at the end of summer. Now, if ever it gets cold where you live, you might wanna cozy up under a blanket, but in this game, we gotta make it first because this is patchwork. This is a two player only game by Uwe Rosenberg where you are uh, competing for scraps of a patchwork quilt and you're trying to build out the best kind of most rad quilt as possible and buttons are your money in this game and your points. Uh, and so in this game, you are trying, you have the central board or rather your own board and there's a central board that kind of marks the timing of the game. And on your board, the goal is simple. Get as much of the board covered as possible because every empty square is negative two points at the end of the game. So first and foremost, you don't want to have a quilt that has a bunch of holes in it basically, right? You want it to be nice and complete as full as possible. And then many quilts, uh, patch pieces I should say, will come with buttons on them. And there are several points in the game where you will cross your little player marker over a little button space on the board, which means you get to count up all the buttons on your quilt and you get one button a piece for each of those buttons. So you kind of trigger like an income, I'll say. But to get those patches, you have to spend buttons. You also have to spend time. It takes time to sew. And so in this one, there's kind of two currencies, money and time. And you only have so much time in the game because once you move all the way to the very center of the, of the central board, your game is over and it's time to score. So this game has always been really fun. It's two player only, so it's great to cozy up with someone. And it evokes kind of warmth and coziness of, of quilt making in a very tactical, like make enemies kind of way, the way quilting should be. Next up is Dreadful Meadows. Now, right in the middle of fall comes Halloween. And Halloween is a wonderful, fun time of year where we all get to dress up. We all get to get a little bit scary out there, but it's usually good fun. So Dreadful Meadows lives perfectly in the fun, fanciful world of Halloween. Here you have various different characters, but you are making candy. You are candy confectioners. You are uh, running your, your candy empires and trying to build out fields where you grow candy. Cause again, we live in a magical Halloween kind of land and you are growing candy in the ground, which is also your money you can use to buy more fields and things. You wanna kind of produce as much candy as possible. There's all sorts of puzzly, uh, layers to this game where you can build groups of the same fields. You can kind of diversify. There's these kind of auto producers. You can place out 
to kind of produce every time you place one of your little workers onto a field because you'll produce things that are adjacent to it that are empty. So how and what pieces of candy you use to spend to add patches, what areas you really invest in to make a large uh, chunk of land of all one kind of candy type. There's all sorts of things that can get you points, contracts, and more. And it's just set in the most wonderfully whimsical animated world. So Dreadful Meadows is just one that's a perfect Halloween kind of evergreen game. You could also do like Horrified and stuff if you want some Halloween vibes. There's a lot of good Halloween games out there now. But Dreadful Meadows has really kind of captured my imagination lately. So it's one I recommend. Next up, I have Creature Comforts. This game is literally all about preparing for the coziest winter of all time. So you start off in springtime in the Maple Valley here in this game, and you are going about town, uh, collecting resources, trying to have successful visits, uh, building tools and things, and, and completing what I call contracts, but like uh, baking bread and building toys and making board games and stuff so that all all you have to worry about in the winter is having the coziest time possible. I think points in this are literally called coziness or comfort points. Like it is all about how do I make the most cozy, wonderful uh, winter of all. And it's set with a beautiful world of, of animals all working together. And there's a little bit of like trickiness because you know in town what locations uh, do, but you're not necessarily sure what dice are gonna be rolled, meaning what dice you need to, uh, or rather what dice you're gonna have on hand to use so when you go to a certain location, you don't have the right dice, you're kind of stuck. You'll know some of your dice before you go, but not all of them. So there's that little bit of like speculation. I'm gonna put a worker here. I hope I can make use of it. Uh, and you're trying to prepare as best you can for literally the coziest winter of all time. All the cards here have just like wonderful art and it just is uh, all about settling in for winter, which I think is cool. That's what fall is all about. Now, you know what I really love about fall is soup. Uh, shh, I gotta focus, I'm shifting the soup mode. That's right, I like a soup, I like a stew, I like a bisque, all right? And in Quacks of Quidlinburg, what are you doing but making a big soup? A weird soup, magical soup. Uh, this game also, you literally have pumpkins you're putting into the soup, so it counts, it counts. As I said, pumpkins for guidance, right? So in Quacks of Quidlinburg, you are pushing your luck. This is a pure push your luck game where you are adding ingredients to this cauldron, uh, you know, again, of magical stew or whatever, one at a time. And most ingredients are gonna have little abilities and stuff that will trigger and usually help you put things further and further out in your cauldron. And you kind of want to go as far as you can However, you can bust. There's these white chits that you can place out. And if you get, I think, a total value of seven or more, it's just too combustible. Your whole stew goes wrong. Too much cayenne. You have one ingredient overpowers the rest and you bust and everything explodes and it goes horrible and you have no friends. But in this game, it's a minor setback, really. You can usually get back into it and stuff uh, with bold enough play. What I like about this one is it's kind of simple. It doesn't get bog you down with a ton of extra stuff. It's just about like, ah, do I pull one more chip? Should I do it? I'm gonna do it. I shouldn't have done it. You know, it's just like that. And uh, all the little abilities are easy to understand. There's uh, a, a kind of a book system so you can put different books out to say that like the crows uh, in this game do this thing or that thing or the mushrooms have this ability this game. So there's a lot of variety there. A couple of expansions to explore as well. But this is one that is just fun, has always been fun, will always be fun. Uh, and if you put it, you know, your mind to it that you're making stew, it's perfect for the fall. So that's it for me on fall games. I got a beach to get to because again, California, but I also got the mountains nearby because California. Now, of course, I'm just one guy who has one set of opinions on games and I didn't name them all. There are literally more just in our collection here that you could totally name that feel appropriate for fall, but it's a very subjective thing. So I wanna know from you in the comments below, what are games that to you feel like fall, feel like getting cozy, the weather's chilling off. Of course, this is all if you're in the Northern Hemisphere where I happen to live. Uh, what games make you kind of feel that change of season that you're seeing around you? I gotta know, because there might be games, I'm sure there's games that I don't even know of that are great for this time of year. So hit me in the comments below. And until next time, I am Mike Murphy. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. We all had fun here. Uh, subscribe if you're new, and we'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks so much for checking out another video from the Brothers Murph. We have all sorts of playthroughs and things that you can see. Uh, top 10 lists, weird board game challenges. We have a Patreon. W money's good. It helps us pay the bills. <laughs> we wouldn't hate it if you had a little uh, extra scratch this time of year to give. We'd certainly appreciate the support. And we'll catch you all in the next video, everyone. Oh, goodbye.